I don't want to hit the, the visor though. It's stupid. <laughs> right in the eye. Welcome back, Hold the Thing of Blade Reviews. We've got the Gothic Steel Warhammer from Lords of Battle today. It's a little dirty, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do with this one is we've got a helmet. It's this 18 gauge helmet. Not exactly what you would bring to combat. I would sure hope not. And underneath, we've got the Zombie Go Boom head. Um, this is supposed to symbolize, theoretically, a hypothetical head of a zombie, not a human. But, so we're gonna work this out. We got multiple, you know, multiple like layers of this to work with. I'm gonna be hitting it with the actual crow's beak on the gothic steel warhammer from Lords of Battle and also the little hammer on the top of it. This is a single piece of steel. We've got a leather handle for this one. Notice the grip is actually flat. So that way if you are striking uh, targets like this, don't like break a tree or anything with it, but like specific targets you can use for this to actually test it, you're gonna not have to really worry about the retention of the grip. That's the other thing with the guard here. And also here, if this is the slide down, you see you also have the grip. It's a little bit over 20 inches in length, uh, single piece of steel. You can see that it's pinned together. Pretty cool item. So we're gonna see what we can do with this one. Let's check it out. All right, so the, for this one, for the Gothic Steel Warhammer from Lords of Battle, we're gonna take a look at working with 18 gauge steel. Obviously this wouldn't be like combat steel, this is more of a destruction test. Uh, we have the zombie go boom head underneath that's supposed to simulate a zombie skull. So we're gonna work with that. I'm gonna work with the flat part first, the actual hammer part if you will, and then I'm gonna move to the crow's beak because otherwise the crow's beak is obviously just gonna destroy it. So we'll work with this, making sure that we got some eye gear on. Actual targets that we're testing here for Cult of Athena, I'm not recommending that you actually do this. We're trying it out, we're taking the risk, so let's see what this thing does. So we'll go with the hammer side first. Let's do just a regular shot, like a diagonal downward one as we come through. That did pretty well. It slimmed off a little bit. So if we come into the handle here, we'll see again that the handle's flat. And that's because on impact, especially if it rolls off of the helmet, you don't really want to have a rounded handle for these. Like this is my personal preference because you can have that slide, there's a tendency, especially with a weighted weapon like this, that you lose grip. So it's a really good idea that this is a flat handle and it has a little bit of a circular guard and also like a little bit of like a pommel. It's basically just to protect your hand from sliding off of its retention. All right, let's try a backhand now. So if we're gonna bring the camera around the other way, try a backhand. Again, we're going with the flat of the hammer first and then we'll go through using the crow's beak. So if you go down diagonal backhand, Same thing, got a good shot in, imprinted. We swing around to this side. Notice that the forehand was a little bit more powerful, a little bit more of an indentation. And then for the sake of covering all the high line strikes, we're also gonna hit it on the vertical. I know that you wouldn't really do that a whole lot if this was a 14 gauge. It probably would cause a concussion hypothetically in this type of scenario, but this is a destruction test on a helmet so we're just seeing what this can do so if I come out with the vertical don't pull this all the way back and kill yourself with the crow's beak make sure it's up and if I go vertical here and I come through that's what we're looking at as far as that goes notice that now the helmet has split right where the actual seam is if you tilt the camera this way kind of get in there and I'm not really using a whole lot of like power I'm not exerting a super heavy amount of force here. What I am doing is just looking at the proper follow through and just using mechanics to let the weapon do the work, right? So now that we've seen what this can do from this angle, I'm gonna start to use the crow's beak and I'm gonna start to hit the temples and see where and how I can get through the helmet. So let's do it. All right, so now we're gonna transition to use the crow's beak. It's gonna go through. So let's see what we can do with this one. If I come out forehand horizontal to start, going all the way through the helmet. We pick this back up. So you can see, if we look inside of here, it punctured all the way through, went into the ear. Back it up a little bit. So, went into the zombie head. This actually kind of failed on it, but that's okay. Let's go into a downward diagonal number one. Going all the way through the helmet. 
element here. So even if I go on the forehand, that's the type of pressure we're looking at getting out of it. There's another puncture. We sweep it around the other way to the backhand, and you're going to want to come a little wide here because there's no crossfire. If we hit the diagonal two, even just with one step in, that's the type of damage we're looking to do here with the helmet, going and getting close in there. And yeah, the hammer already did a lot. This is more of like the finishing blow as traditionally this weapon was used. You might have used this to concuss, to get somebody down, turn it around, and then go through the helmet. There's a vertical shot. If I go straight through with the backhand horizontal, there's another one right to the ear. See, you're getting the puncture. Go ahead and get in close there. And we're purposely not, we're purposely not taking the helmet off yet because there's no point in taking it on, taking it off. Then I get a bunch of steel on my hand. Now we're gonna start looking at combinations here. Like I mentioned in the previous clip, tactically we're looking at using that hammer as the concussive damage and then turning it around and then using that crow's beak as the finishing blow. I'm gonna work through it, do a little bit of footwork with it. So if I come out, I start up on the hammer side, I hit the backhand, boom, and I come around and turn it around and then go through the skull. If you have to, use the other hand to pull it out. Come out, same thing here, we're on the forehand. Then we come out, we pin it around. There's the, there's the forehand again. So you can see that crow's beak being tapered, the crazy thing about it is it's actually not even sharp. It's just barely pointed. It's like a, if you had like a reenactment spear or like a spearhead that like was not sharpened at all, none of this is sharp. It's dulled, but obviously with that amount of force going through metal, the pointy or something is like that, easier is to go through a piece of steel, so a thin piece of steel. All right, let's do a few more shots. Let's take a look at some of the damage we've done with this on the zombie head and this 18 gauge night helmet. So we're looking at a lot of forehand shots here on this side, remembering that we started off with using the hammer side first to see how well this actually does. And remember, this thing is really well built. This thing is really well built. It's not too long of a handle. I would say if this was a few inches longer, I would be worried about my shoulder and my arm getting tired. Obviously you gotta have training, but even in general, I think it's really well built. So, so we're coming through with this. We see the forehands with the crow's beak. We see the verticals with the crow's beak, the hammer. If we run around this side, we'll see a little bit closer to this side. So you can see the front, we'll go front to back. So there's the hammer side right there. We turn that around with the backhand. Also had the forehand here on the vertical. And now if we come around the back, you see that we also have a shot to the back of the ear as well. Going around this side, another one with the crow's beak, another one with the crow's beak, and this one again, over to the ear again. Let's hit a few more to the sides on the horizontal strikes. That way we can also see that the diagonals are obviously really doing a lot of damage on the actual helmet. Let's start to test it out on the horizontals for this stuff. to like pull this thing out either. taken off some of the paint like dude, you're going through you're going through a helmet this one um, I went through the visor off of camera it's not something you'd really target because it's literally this tiny little target that's not really what this weapon is really designed for you need a rondel dagger to try to wedge that through but even if I come through and try to hit the eye on that it still hit it you can get right in there you can pop that but you can see this weapon is really designed to actually cause concussive damage if the weapon was to get stuck, as in, let's say I hit it here, 
boom, I came around, this got stuck as I come through, and I can't wedge it out, so use the left hand. As I come through, glanced off of that one. So now you just you should see on that one, see how I have all that black on my wrist right here? I glanced off of that as I came through on the helmet. If I didn't have that disc, could have lost the weapon. And then we'll also see like how simple it is. Like when I'm hitting this on a backhand, even if I'm hitting this on a jab, not something you really do with this weapon, but even popping the jab here or popping a broken strike, like that's going all the way through. See, like that's kind of all the way in. All right, we're back. <laughs> So we'll see that this thing has done a lot of work on the Gothic Steel Warhammer from Lord of Battles. Um, you're noticing that this is a little curved. It was a, it's a, it's a manufacturer defect. So this is obviously not one you're going to get. That's why we're hitting stuff with it. So if we look at the actual head outside of the helmet, so I didn't hit anything on the visor really because there's really no point. I mean, I hit this part of it, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to really look to hit that anyway. So we pop this off, and I do have gloves on because I don't want to get a bunch of shards of metal in my hand. So let's look at the helmet. A lot of punctures. Destroy the top of it at the seam. Back of the head punctures. Right through the ears. Toward the ear. Back of the ear. So if we put the helmet off to the side for now. That's going to be a cool photo, actually. Put the photo off to the side for now. So we'll see that that was a vertical shot. We crushed the skull. We're all the way in on that one, on the zombie skull. If I come around this way, these are the shots to the ear. And I'm going to put the helmet up for comparison. This one went right through like the jawline toward the, toward the mandible. Back of the head, come around this way. This one didn't quite get all the way through. It pierced the skin. Still didn't crack the skull. That one cracked it. And surprisingly, even with, you know, that, so these marks here, if you look on top, if you get an overhead view, these darker marks are from the helmet, but they're also from, you can see they're from the crow's beak. So I'm not even going to talk, I'm not even going to talk about this being like whether it worked or not. This is a hypothetical test for a piece of equipment that we carry a Cult of Athena, period. So we worked through this, we worked through it with the, with the helmet on. And now we're going to take the helmet off and we're going to, we're going to crack, the, we're going to crack the, the zombie tool for this one. So let's get to it. So we've done a number on the helmet, <laughs> to say the least. We've done a lot of work on this thing. We're going to put this off to the side for now. And we're going to work the hammer on the actual zombie target. Let's see what it does. Well, that worked. <laughs> That was one, that was two shots. Yeah, you can see what's in there. It's like a resin material that's supposed to signify like a zombie, hypothetical zombie skull. It's like rubbery skin. Let's just keep going with it. Let's hit the crow's beak now. We come on the vertical, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Let's try and crush it, all the way through. So you'll see. We're basically all the way in the skull now. All right, so now we're going to go into combinations without the helmet on. We got the hammer side, we're gonna flip it over and then use the crow's beak to finish off the zombie head. Let's do it. So we come out with the hammer, come through, boom, that comes through, and we're all the way through that. Sorry. <laughs> so I pull this around. Damn, dude. So I went through the vertical. This went all the way down. Split that open. It's also just the damage of it in general, but... All right, so we had some fun doing some testing on an 18-gauge steel helmet. You can see we basically annihilated the thing, which was the point of this test. It's not a point of the test of, like, would a helmet last up to this? You're not supposed to get hit in the head with this stuff anyway. So we worked with the helmet, and then we pretty much finished off the zombie head. So we crushed it. If we come around this way, you can see it's literally hanging on by a thread. And this material is not soft. You could fill this up with like goo and get a really big explosion, but we didn't. <laughs> so 
just showing you that this is not thin material by any means right it actually takes some force which is you know if you're buying it for that and you're using these targets it's to test some stuff that you have for your gear so let's pull around this way so we got the head so this is the Lords of Battle gothic steel warhammer it's a really great tool um, for you know reenactments it's a great tool for testing on zombie targets you want to pick up one of these zombie targets this is one of the most realistic ones you can grab um, if you want one of these click the link below in the, this video if you want this warhammer which is really badass and it's a really good price point item as well it's not super expensive um, click the link below this video subscribe to the channel like this video and i'll talk to you soon